Okay, call to order the meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee. Uh, first order of business is the water bodies and what they're doing. So I'll turn it over to you. Okay. If you could introduce sure. the head table and get started. Okay, I'm David White from the Conservation Commission. Emily Sullivan. Hi, I'm the, agent. I'm the Conservation Agent and Town Environmental Planner. Susan Chapnick, I'm a Conservation Commissioner. Teresa D. Benedictus, Public Works. Ellen Reed, Friends of Monotomy Rocks Park. Okay. So we're going to go through the water bodies in some rough order here. I'm going to talk first about the reservoir, and then we'll proceed to other water bodies. David, could I just interject? Does everybody, did everybody have a copy of the report, the water bodies? Okay, so we don't have to go through in detail. We're just going to hit the highlights. Do you have an extra copy? Did you have extra copies? I don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do you have an extra copy in the report? No, it doesn't matter. Possibly. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. No. Yeah, it doesn't uh, uh, keep it through. Okay. Well, the big issue at the reservoir is water chestnuts, which, um, if left unharvested, will grow and cover the entire reservoir surface. Okay. Thank you. Do you have extra copies? No, it was emailed out. I know, but I'll read it off my phone. Okay. Next, write a note that will bring in. Okay, he's giving out your full extra batch. I may have one more. Let me check here. Yeah, I didn't make it printed. I just have my own drive. That's okay. I wouldn't worry about it. No, I don't see one here. Okay. Okay, Arlington Reservoir, yeah. it's a um, well-used um, recreation area, and the problem with the reservoir are the water chestnuts which grow on the surface of the water. And if they left uncontrolled, they just spread and cover the entire surface of the water, totally clogging the water surface. And we've been harvesting the water chestnuts periodic on a regular basis for a number of years now, both mechanical harvesting and also hand harvesting. The Mystic River Water Association has had several hand harvesting events in the last year, both in the spring and in the fall, to get those near the shore that the um, machines can't get. Um, it's an ongoing process. The seeds may remain viable for a number of years, so they keep spreading out. And sometimes you can't get all, can't get all the plants, so it's an ongoing process. Hopefully they've reduced the coverage incrementally. I also might mention that the um, new plan, master plan for the reservoir, includes a boat launch, which means more boat usage on the reservoir surface as well. So keeping the water open is a valuable aspect of the reservoir. Okay, um, Susan? Uh, I'm going to discuss the McLennan Park Detention okay. Basin. Why don't we just sort of Sorry. stop one and yep. two things oh, one sure. at a time. Are there any questions on the uh, reservoir? Okay, Christine? Uh, your report says that um, once the water chestnut seed bank is further depleted, the harvesting efforts and costs will be reduced. So can you be more specific about further depleted? At what point can we expect a reduction in, in expenditures on the reservoir for the water it's, chestnuts? It's hard to predict because there's so many factors. I mean, historically, there has been a reduction in the coverage. It all depends on the climate, the um, how successful the harvesting is, all sorts of factors involve that. The plan is to know eventually you should be able to reduce the new plants, but there's also old seeds that remain on the bottom that come up and produce plants, new plants every year. So it's, a, it's hard to say precisely, but the history has been that basically if you continue harvesting water chestnuts, the growth is reduced. And at some point, it's down to a very low level, so you can just do minimal effort every year. But you have to keep on top of it to keep it controlled. So we had hoped that we were going to drop it down in this coming year, down to 10,000 from 15. But we feel like we're, we're at the point where we feel like we're gaining traction on the coverage, but not 
if we slow down, we could lose lose the ground that we've gained. So we just thought it was more appropriate to leave it at fifteen thousand, and we just we put it at fifteen and carried it out rather than saying, well, next year we think it's going to drop off, or next year we think it's going to drop off. We just want to continue to press until we can try to get this under control and manageable and then be prepared to spend less. But we just haven't gotten to that sort of tipping point yet. I, I'm seeing in your budget that, that you're projecting more for the res. And it, was, it was 15. It was 15 and we've continued 15 out through 22 and there's a little bit of testing and water quality that 1500 but we were going to drop it down to 10,000 but we just don't think that's appropriate at this point. Are you, she's looking at the 16.5. 16, 16, 15, 1500 is water quality testing. No. Yes. Water <laughs> chestnut hand pull is 15,000 and we have it in 20, 21 and 22. So She's looking at the detail on the second page. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're carrying, so we're, notwithstanding that the report says you're hoping or expecting that the results will reduce cost, your budget, your budgeting. We're not budgeting that, We're not at the point reduced. where we think we can cut it back. That instead of we could cut it back and maybe get the same amount of material taken out, but we want to reduce the coverage area in that open water part. And we're finally sort of pushing it back into the shallower area, sort of the Lexington side, which is hard to get in there. Some seasons, if it's a dry year, the water is so shallow, we can't get close. And then any, any of the plants that we don't get up are going to drop their seeds down into the muck and be down there for years and years waiting to pop and start all over again. <coughs> okay, other questions? Grant? How do you measure progress? Coverage. One measure is by the water coverage, how much of the water is, how much of the surface is covered at the peak of the season. Another is basically by how many tons of harvesting. <laughs> so if you, if you do the coverage the same area and we have tons go down, you have to achieve some sort of reduced plant growth. And how is that, how is it done? Do you have any numbers or um, did it go down mm -hmm. by, I, I, don't, I don't see it here, I, I don't, if it's in here, I don't, did it go down by a certain hundred? You should make a report every year. We did not get the report this year yet. Um, That's a point of contention. I'd say it's probably gone down at least two thirds, though. And if you go back eight or nine years, it was almost all the way up to the, where the beach area is, almost completely covered. In terms of area, yeah. And now we have it pretty much down to that sort of pocket um, on the farthest away on the Lexington side. It's greatly reduced, but the battle's not over. Thank you, Grant. Uh, Charlie? Yeah, so uh, Teresa, do you remember when you were on the Capitol Planning Committee? I do. I'm sorry, Charlie. When you speak up. Sorry. <coughs> Teresa, do you remember when you were on the Capital Planning Committee? I do remember that. When was that? I, around uh, 90, 91, 92. Do you remember we were spending money to yeah. get rid of water chestnuts? 25000 Yeah. Yes. So uh, the point I, I would make is that um, if they're making progress, and this is a long battle, and mm. these water chestnuts are really insidious, and um, I'm glad to hear that it's that you're gaining ground. I think we gave, we we thought we won before. We were doing 25, 25 for, I don't know, two, three years, and everything was looking great, and it was quiet for no. four or five years, and then kaboom. Um, we, we, we lost it again, and we're not going to give up this time. Any other questions on uh, the reservoir? What do you do with the uh, things? I assume they get composted someplace or oh burned right. or incinerated. They get incinerated ultimately. We dewater them now on the st the uh, the overflow, the secondary overflow. We let them sit there most of the summer, so they almost look like seaweed. They compost. And then we scoop them up and we bring them to the yard, and they ultimately go to the incinerator in North Andover. The reason you don't want to compost is because if there are any seeds that are still viable, you don't want to put them somewhere else because then you're spreading these invasives. So we don't have a choice there. Okay, next. 
Okay. <clears throat> Which book? I'm going to be uh, presenting McLennan Park Detention Ponds and the Mystic River um, Water, uh, the Mystic Riverfront Restoration. So I'll start with the McLennan Park um, Detention Ponds on Reeds Brook. Um, <clears throat> as you know, we've presented this in the past few years. We've embarked on an assessment of the health of the ponds in um, the McLennan Park because of the, ob the observance of this orange flocculation, which is iron flocculation, um, on the surface of the water, more, more or less different times of, of the year. Um, <coughs> we started the study back in um, 2017, 2016, 2017, and uh, the assessment at that time indicated that there was no human health risk, but we needed to do further studies to assess the health of the ecosystem. So we did embark on that, and in 2018, last year, we did two additional sampling and analysis events to look at surface water and sediment at different places in the ponds, inlets and outlets, and the center. Um, we haven't gotten the final report yet from the uh, contractor, who is Woods Hole Group. We expect that within a month or so. However, they gave us a preliminary assessment, and I'll, I'll read a little bit of the words. Um, on December 4th, they went out for the second time. So we did a May sampling last year and a, and a winter sampling, because we wanted to see if there were seasonality effects which there were. There was much more flocculation in the spring than in the winter. Um, we documented iron flocculation um, and noticed that the flocculation was easily disturbed and also flushed out periodically by rain events. Um, so after a rain event, you don't see as much flocculation as you do um, prior to that. Woods Hole Group has um, said that they observed abundant and diverse biological community in the area, including um, amphibians, frogs, um, many species of birds and ducks, um, as well as small mammals in the area. Um, based on the pr their preliminary review of the data and their visual observations, which will be in their report, they believe that there is, and I quote, no readily apparent harm. And that wording is important because under the Massachusetts Contingency Plan, the MCP, to determine whether there is harm to the environment from these iron flocculations, you have to prove that there's no readily apparent harm. And that's done um, by um, different types of evidence, <coughs> visual evidence and uh, sampling evidence. So the next step, and, and we will get the final report from them, but the next step, what they're going to do in their report, is also compare directly the sediment and surface water data that were obtained to relevant, what they call benchmarks for what's considered healthy for the ecosystem, for the critters that live in the sediment, for fish, for birds, for other wildlife, and um, do a, an assessment of ecological risk. But it looks like um, we're, we're ending up in a place with, with a relatively robust ecosystem that the iron flocculation is not affecting. If we end up in that place, then we need to decide, does the iron flocculation bother us from an aesthetic point of view? That's a different question. But the first question where we were addressing the first two questions were, is there harm to humans? No. And is there harm to the ecosystem and that we think is no under a preliminary um, preliminary report and we'll get that report soon. So are there any questions on that? Yeah. Okay. Christine? Does, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, does does the, this report or the prior report indicate where this is coming from? And, and no. um, my follow-up question mm -hmm. is can Assuming the report is as favorable as we're hoping it would be, can we um, rest assured that it won't get worse? Where, what's, where, what's the source of it? Can it get worse? Um, well, yes, those are my questions right now. Okay. 
Um, we, we did not design the um, investigation to look at source, and the reason for that is because, and, and originally we were hoping we could, but in order to find source, we probably have to do a lot more sampling and analysis. So we did prove it's not coming from Reed's Brook. So we do have some samples upstream behind Dauphin Street. I don't know if people know the area, but that's where Reed's Brook comes down and then it, and then it culverts, goes underneath, and then it comes out into these detention ponds. So we did do some sampling upstream and we do not find the same levels of iron upstream. So it's not coming from upstream from Reed's Brook. The second question was, I mean, it, it could come from two different places. One could be the landfill, mm -hmm. and one could be just natural, um, and exacerbated maybe from road um, surface runoff um, in terms of the chemistry. Storm drains. Because a lot of storm drains end up um, outfalling into these ponds, storm drains from Vesda and other places up there. Um, the reason we couldn't tell if it's coming from the landfill, but we don't think it is, and I'll tell you why. We were looking for some groundwater wells that would help us, because when the landfill was put in, we had that. Mm -hmm. um, but the only wells that are still there are on the wrong side. <laughs> They're not on the side of the detention ponds where the landfills are. So that wasn't a possibility. In order to figure out if it's coming from the landfill, we would have to install groundwater wells, which is a kind of an expensive endeavor. Um, one reason we don't think it's coming from the landfill is we don't see higher values on the landfill side. When you look at the data, and when we have the final report, we'll have maps with the data. It will show you where the high values are, so you can visually see that yourself. Right now, you just have to take my word for it. But um, the high values are not on the landfill side. So that's interesting. Um, the high values are at the, the, um, the outfalls. So the inlet where it's coming in and another outfall on the other side. So it doesn't look like it's coming from the landfill. Um, but so if we wanted to get at source, that would be an expensive endeavor. We could look at that. Can it get worse? Now that's an interesting question. Um, that's something I will ask Wood's whole group to um, give me an, an assessment. They probably, c they may not have the data to say that, but they can give their best technical guess um, on whether it would get worse or not, you know, given the conditions in the ponds. Mm -hmm. So that I, that I can't answer. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I will say visually it's striking what happens when you have a big rain event. It all flushes out totally flushes out. And this hmm. flock, when you move it, you know, with a stick or something, is very, very mobile. Hmm. So it's not like settling into the pond and, and, and harming the hmm. ecosystem. It's really flushing through. And forming and flushing. Yeah. Could we get a copy of the report when you... Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. If you could... Uh, Who should that be sent to? Email it to his... Email it to Liz. to the committee. I will do that. Okay. 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 Yep. Last year, there was we um, raised concern about the frag muddies. Actually, we've been raising concerns about the frag muddies for a couple of years, and it was an, I, I recall there was an indication on the conservation commission's part to look into that. Has anything been done about? That? We have not. Um, there was also an issue that the. Um, Department of Health wanted to do some mosquito spraying up near there where the Phragmites is. That's on the, towards the Lexington side. And I don't know what happened with that some either. Dredge, some, some, some excavation too. They wanted yeah, to dredge. And they dredge wanted to dredge, dredge there, so we thought we would wait and see, well, is that going to affect, because dredging would get rid of some of the Phragmites itself. You know, you might kill two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that. So though, they either. haven't dredged it yet, okay. but I anticipate... Uh, you know, in the coming year that they will because they have uh, approval. It's an exempt uh, project through the Conservation right. Commission and, and through the, the Wetlands Protection Act to dredge that for mosquito control purposes. So we thought maybe we would wait for that and then see what <coughs> the, you know, what the result of that was because it's in the exact area that the Phragmites well, is in. There's also a lot of Phragmites on the trail. And on the, hills on the trail. The, the, the 
the trail next to the, the pond, the hillside up towards the playing fields. Okay. That seems to be getting worse every year. Okay. We can look into that. That would be great. I, I, was, I was thinking about just the Phragmites in the brook itself. <laughs> okay. Is there any other questions? Okay. Dean? Describe this process of assessing harm to humans for something. Mm -hmm. So there is harm to humans who must have paid it, clean it up. If there were. Now there is isn't. Could we dump it on the state? <laughs> okay. Um, first, I just want to make clear there is no harm to human health. We proved that um, back in 2017. So we have to pay for it. There isn't. Well, we, I don't think we could yeah, okay. because we, it was our landfill. Okay. So if there were harm to human health or the environment, it was Arlington's landfill. And so then Arlington is on the hook for the cleanup. Okay. Um, that's the way it would be. Yeah. John? Could you explain why uh, it doesn't seem to be coming from the landfill? but I didn't quite understand that explanation. Could you give that explanation again? Sure. So um, there is the potential that you could have um, groundwater seeping from a landfill that had um, high iron mm -hmm. that would promote this iron flocculation. If that would happen, yes, I don't have a picture. I don't have a picture of the, um, the site here. But um, if that would happen, then you would expect that, I'm just going to draw the pond, <laughs> and this is the landfill. <clears throat> so this, if this is the landfill, and this is the pond, it has two sections, you would expect that if you were having groundwater that had high iron that was causing this problem, you would get higher numbers here right, sure. if it was leaching. We do not see that. Where we see the higher numbers are, um, this is Reed's Brook. And this is um, <coughs> some of the highest numbers we see. So this is Reed's Brook. This is up in Dauphin. This is Thesda Street. So Reed's Brook where it comes in to these detention ponds, that's a high number. And the other really high numbers are upland of that right here in this um, area that looks like it was a part, maybe part of the landfill or a separate dump. It has a lot of debris in it, um, tires and things like that in there. It does have some Phragmites and other, it's very congested. It often doesn't have standing water in it, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes does. And, and there, that's, these are where the numbers are, not here. So that's why I make that, but I can't tell for sure. The way you could tell for sure is if we put groundwater wells in here. But that's, that's a very expensive endeavor just to see what the source is. So. Okay, any other questions? Okay. okay. Re refresh my memory. Does the water flow into Lexington? Yes. Okay. So this is Arlington, and this is the Lex this is this is the outfall, and then this is Lexington. And then it swings back around down to the reservoir. That's a road brook in the reservoir. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. And it's gotcha. culverted in Lexington. It's all underground. Well, some some of it's open. Oh, it is. Yes. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no more questions. Then onward. Okay. The next one is. Um, well, maybe do you want to talk, and then I'll I'll do. Yeah, Mystic. I, I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm going to take do a rest, you, and then do you, you want me to you want me to talk about? No, that I'll do it. Oh, would you, well, I was hoping. Oh, maybe Ellen. Ellen. Hills. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, Hills Pond is two two and a half acre pond at Monotomy Rocks Park. Oh, thank you. Um, until two years ago, just the Friends Monotomy Rocks Park took care of paying for the treatments of the pond. And we got wind of this great idea so that we now use our money towards things such as putting a pump in for aeration of the pond and pulling out the massive amounts of cattails that were choking the pond. Um, the town finally put in electricity last summer off of Churchill to a small shed built by 
Pete Howard for a pump that now has three bubblers in the pond to aerate the pond, to add oxygen to the pond. The pond is completely dependent on rainfall. There is no spring or any fresh water flowing into the pond other than what falls from the sky or comes down the hills from Churchill or the hills of the park. So we do have a couple treatments a year for algae and for the occasional water weed. But and over the years, our use of chemicals has dropped dramatically. And as you can see by the budget, we are conservative, but so far we haven't had to use our full request. Okay. Any questions? Charlie? Uh, yeah, I, I, first of all, I would like to thank the Board of Bobby Committee and Ellen in particular for housing those aerators for seven or eight years <laughs> in your basement. But it's really good to get that electric power in there and have the aeration work. So I don't have to grumble this year. No, <laughs> you'll just have to grumble to remind me to put the timer on it this year. <laughs> Any other questions? Next. Steve, do you want to discuss uh, the treatments at Spy Pond? Yeah, um, I first got involved in the Spy Pond Committee about 15 years ago. The pond was in <coughs> a lot rougher shape than it is today, and there were two issues. It was um, coontail, a native species, and Eurasian milfoil, a non-native species. And over time, we developed this patent that seemed to be working pretty effectively. I think many of you are familiar with it. It's about $45,000 for sonar treatment every three or four years would usually make the call at the end of the third year whether you can stretch it and about ten thousand dollars every other year for um spot treatments with reward and an occasional i think roughly five thousand dollar treatment if there was an algae bloom and the algae blooms come about when we're filled with the others and you get a lot of growth sitting on the surface you get filamentous algae growing there and then you get the bloom and um and we were falling into this pattern that seemed pretty successful until last year. And last year, for a good six, seven weeks in the middle of the summer, a third of the pond was absolutely unusable. And it was um, a new growth. It was finding Nyad, uh, something that we've <coughs> heard of before, but not never seen in this kind of volume at the surface. Um, we also found some wa uh, water chestnuts for the first, first time, handfuls, but we know what that can go. And so um, we're asking ourselves, were we getting lazy, but also really wondering about our vendors, were they getting lazy? In terms of we seem to have a more, re getting into a more reactive mode as opposed to proactive. So the one thing that's new on the fiscal um, 19 budget is a $10,000 <coughs> water quality testing assessment. Because we really want to try and get a better fundamental understanding early in the year of what we're up to. And, um, and I just saw some of the RFPs, RFPs come back, I'll scan them. Um, it, it's essential. They all talk about providing the report. And we were getting the reports in the past, but we get them at the end of the year as part of the overall assessment. We weren't getting them early in the year in time to do something different. So I think we'll get this back in good shape, but it's a challenge. Um, the pond's getting used more than it's ever been used, uh, but that possibly is a source of uh, some of these new um, invasive species. I, th I forget what Brad's count is, but I think we're to, we're now, we now have seven or eight of the 15 identified invasive species. It's, it's not a prize we're shooting for. That's all I have. We also issued two RFPs this year as well to create new responses from other vendors for the work. So we're mm -hmm. doing and that. And just to elaborate on David, try to isolate the survey from the treatment. Give us, hopefully trying to get more vendors to tell us what we're facing and maybe second opinion and, 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 and in a way. Uh, but boy, it's an oligarchy. It's, uh, there aren't many vendors out there. And uh, it's interesting. Okay, any questions from the committee? Shall we? Uh, Steve, do, do you know how much um, chemical runoff there is from local housing and from, uh, like, down coming down the highway from along Route 2 going into the pond? 
you know, mm -hmm. lawn, lawn feed and stuff like that. Well, it's not just, not, it's, it's the whole hill, the whole basin, all the storm, storm drains. drains. From all the lawns all over the watershed come to the storm drains and eventually get to the pond. So um, that's, there are no springs at Spy Pond, the same at Hills Pond. It's all stormwater runoff. And so it's not so much the local houses, adjacent, which adjacent. are all mm -hmm. under uh, jurisdiction of CONCOM and have to watch out what you put into the lawn. As we said, you just use lime. But it's the whole watershed. And so th the, the water body is overloaded with nutrients from years of um, maintaining good lawns. That's what we're doing. How, how many entry points are there in the pond? For stormwater? For stormwater or for people? Well, stormwater. I mean, there's, so there's, there's big ones that at the end of each of the roads that go down, so the Goulds, Chapman, um, the, map, the map sits behind our meetings at the town hall. This and then all Mass Ave. Mass Ave also drains to the pond. So, and again, all the, all the way around. So uh, I guess the 40, something like 40 inlets. 40? We, we, yeah, we do have uh, catch basins to separate oils and major um, you know, floating contaminants, but we won't take all the chemicals. Well, there's no way to filter out the chemicals. We've, we've looked at different approaches. We've looked at you know, trying to um, clean the pond over time with some kind of bubble or just there's no economic solution. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. No, I have questions. Oh. I didn't know. Which one is the testing? I see testing for hills on the bottom. Well, if you look at the vertical column, spike on page two, on spike column, yeah. and detail of 119, there's a $10,000 figure on the spike on. Another question, are the, um, is the crew team charged facilities use of screws and platform? Not that I would know. <coughs> They'd only pay an athletic fee to the, through, the, through the rec. They pay a head count, uh, but that's nothing to do with this. So that goes to the rec money, the head count? They get an athletic fee from participants, but nothing not linked to this at all. Have in the process of putting up additional signage at the launching ramps and in the storage area for the shelves about making sure the shelves are clean and before they go back in the phone, just in case. Do they pay somebody to rent the area where they keep the shelves on the other side? That's town property, that, that, that gravel lot there? Yeah. That's municipal property. Okay. So is that what they're paying the fee for? No. Uh, with athletes pay an athletic fee, and part of a very small portion of that goes to the rec department. Six dollars and fifty cents. Any other questions? Um, the the um, stuff that was funded by the CPA grant for when this construction. Started. Excellent. You're ahead of the game. So that's what we'll talk about next. So um, so, <laughs> so there is a spy pond shoreline stabilization program. And as mentioned, it, it's not funded through any of, of this funding, but it, outside funding like the CPA. Um, there's also some uh, CDBG, some community development block grant uh, funding. Um, and we, we did receive uh, some funding from some uh, Friends of Spy Pond Park uh, gave a donation. And so with that, um, the focus will be on um, Spy Pond Park, Scannell Field, and then behind the Boys and Girls Club. And primarily it is a, a slope stabilization project. And so the hope is that um, we do, we install erosion controls and we stabilize the slope. And then that over time will add to better quality of the pond generally. Um, so uh, we received uh, bids for that work. The work also includes um, some uh, repaving of the paths to become ADA compliant. Um, so kind of giving the park a bit of a facelift. Um, and so we anticipate uh, awarding a contract for that work uh, over this week. And uh, the construction then would start um, as soon as possible given like uh, weather constraints in, in the construction season. So sometime in March. Um, 
we will phase the project so the spy pond park will be uh, stabilized and the the path work will be constructed first and then moving on to scandal uh, field and the boys and girls club um, probably later end of summer fall what does what it do to the paths are they being paved or so it's um we'll pave it but with a, a porous paved material so that water can infiltrate a lot of time you, you may have noticed the the path it's a, it's a stone dust path and it, it washes out pretty easily so this will um, kind of just stabilize that area and so there it will prevent washout and, and add to kind of the um, the stormwater drainage of the area uh, are there any questions Peter are there any new developments uh, associated with that huge sandbar at the another good question yeah, yeah Susan I, I can speak to the sandbar um, <laughs> <laughs> the um, Yes, there are some. We're, we're going to have a working session with um, D D D Mass with DOT, Mass DOT, Mass DOT and their contractor, VHB, about the sandbar actually this Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, but preliminarily, they did sampling um, and analysis last fall, actually almost winter, and um, to characterize the sandbar as they need to do for regulations in Massachusetts and also um, because of the Conservation Commission's request to assess the levels of arsenic in the sandbar. If you might remember, um, Spy Pond has fairly high levels of arsenic in its sediment. Um, these are historical from um, the application of arsenic um, pesticides, in, mm -hmm. unfortunately, and herbicides. Um, historically so we don't want those to be uh, redistributed uh, by disturbing the sandbar if they're in there so we asked for arsenic um, data as well which we should receive and get to review so hopefully we will get an answer on the sandbar soon and the goal is to um, remove it um, but I we'll see <laughs> how are they going to do that I, I think excavation is there. Proposing yeah, to dredge to dredge it the yeah. sandbar. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we, we'll be able to tell you more after after Thursday. <laughs> okay. Other other questions on this spy pond or this? Uh, in various iterations of this uh, shoreline uh, erosion, that there's going to be a bunch of tree removal, and then some mm -hmm. of that was removed, and then at some point. That should be holding tree here, and tree that are going to be removed. So, mm -hmm. what, what's, I, I know some things change. So, how many trees are going to be uh, removed, and when are the tree is going to be held? So, um, as of right now, I think only two or three trees are proposed uh, to be removed, kind of behind Scano Field. Uh, we're proposing a, um, a timber overlook there, and so in order uh, to create the space for that overlook, we need to remove trees. Um, I, I get so I, I imagine once we award the the contract, uh, we'll do a, a site walk, like pre-construction kind of meeting, and then we can identify exactly you know the trees that would be removed, um, and uh, you know the conservation commission we do have a tree replacement policy, so um, anything that's removed will have to be replaced um, based on those uh, the the size and um, and, and those guidelines. Um, usually, if, if it's under jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission, we generally don't have a tree hearing as well because it's kind of covered. The, the Conservation Commission requires a one-to-one -one or a two-to-one replacement depending upon the size of the trees. So if the DBH is greater than, I, I think, think it's two inches, mm -hmm. um, we require a two-to-one replacement. I believe that we have not had tree hearings for any of those kinds of issues in our jurisdiction. Is that not true? So after the problems at Magnolia, yeah, and that I, sort of debacle, yeah, I hear you. Felt that a good policy would be would be to do you have to do tree hearings for all removal. So at the senior center, though it's not technically covered by Chapter 87, which is the state law for tree hearings, tree hearings were held. And for the Whittemore Center, there'll be tree hearings that will be held. Mm -hmm give the public an opportunity and, a, and an end date and a process with appeal to the selectmen. I guess we haven't had another site yeah. where it's been under 
So what's Ar happening Arlington here is jurisdiction, uh, our we, jurisdiction. Yeah. Sorry, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we most in the Conservation Commission, we mostly deal with private property, mm -hmm. and that's why there won't be any tree hearings. But this is new, mm -hmm. and it's uh, public land, and I think mm -hmm. that. It's appropriate it's, for yeah. the yeah. tree warden to, uh, to yeah. weigh in yeah. on these trees. Yeah. 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 So we should schedule. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Just on the main spreadsheet one already. I'm sorry, Annie? Just on the main spreadsheet one already. Okay. Uh, I'm sure we'll get to that. We will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> should I talk about um, yeah, yeah, Mystic River? And then we just have one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'd like to um, discuss very briefly the Mystic Riverfront Restoration Project. This is, um, this is, I think, on the last page of your um, summary review. And as you may remember, um, Arling, the town of Arlington was re re rewarded, uh, was awarded with a natural resource damages grant um, of Which almost fifty thousand dollars, which we're using to create a new um, riparian habitat that's that's a habitat um, that transitions between upland and river um, riverine ecosystems um, at the site where we had an oil spill due to a truck turnover in 2013 I know this is 2019 the, <laughs> the wheels grind slowly but they keep grinding um, we started in 2017 if you would remember with um, fixing the outfall that was broken there and um, creating a swale, which is an area to infiltrate water and help percolate and clean it before it gets into um, the, <coughs> the river. And also to do, uh, to create a nice area for the community to be able to enjoy the, the river at that place by doing na native plantings, um, placing a bench there, moving the path around to make it easy and accessible. We are going to be completing that project this spring uh, with a community planting event with uh, approximately 80 third grade students from the Thompson School who are going to walk down. There's going to be an educational event about what happened there and what we're doing for the environment. They will be hands-on planting and um, then we'll also talk about stewardship of the area with them and make them all little stewards if they want um, to kind of watch out for the area over time. Um, we're going to have some signage that we'll unveil at that point. Uh, DEP will be there. Um, so we're looking forward to a, a real community um, event for this, for this uh, project. Also, um, Emily will be presenting this project we were asked to present it at the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissioners meeting. Their annual meeting is next so this Saturday. Saturday, right? This, this Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. We were asked to present this as an example of, of some positive work that, that's being done in the state, which is great. Um, so, are there any questions on that? Yeah. Right. Um, who developed the design for that? Um, we did along with, um, we meaning the Arlington Conservation Commission, along with DPW, the Department of Public Works, and Bill Copperthorne is um, our project manager there, and with DCR and DEP. So it's a real um, combined mm -hmm. effort um, oh, of several boom. groups. Sounds like a lot of contributors. <laughs> there were a lot of contributors, and actually it was an adaptive management kind of um, project because what happens is we had a design and it was um, we didn't get the vegetation in and then we got a pr fairly severe winter and the design didn't hold up our swale we got some washout in the in the that's in the area and then we had to fix it so it was actually very fortuitous that we didn't get the plantings in when we expected to and that that the design we could see how the design would actually work in a severe storm situation, and we changed it. Yeah, exactly. So that was kind of my question. Okay. That because I've there you seen go. that on yeah. a, probably a daily basis. Yep. Including the increasing number of swan in the Mystic River. There's oh, great. There's actually about 20 of them. Oh, really? So actually, okay. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's why I asked about the design because uh, 
it seemed to be definitely an iterative process. There was a couple of times it got washed out. Yep. Um, so, okay, I, yeah, the, thank you. You're welcome. And also, if you may have seen, some of the trees that were planted did not survive, but we will be replacing them. Um, so, so, again, the, the design doesn't seem, I'm glad the design is, I'm glad that it's working out, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem like the design, it, it seemed, seemed like there was, Problems one with it. For driving the bus for the design. That's, I guess, what we what the result was. But yeah. it seems like it's okay now. But yeah. How, when, when you present that to the commission, or whatever this presentation is. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd like that to get fair play. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions on the Mystic Lakes? Um, how are the Mystic Lakes doing? I know there's two swimming areas in the upper Mystic Lake. Is the lower Mystic Lake swimmable? Swimmable. Swimmable. Mm -hmm. um, it it actually is. The Mystic Lakes, ha um, EPA and the Mystic River, Myra, um, do that. right. Do ratings of all the water bodies in Massachusetts, and that's based on bacteria. Um, so for swimmability, and Mystic Lakes get A which is the top yes. rating. So they do re they've been doing really well. Now the um, the river where where this is is an A minus but it's it's up from a B plus last <laughs> year so it's doing better too. So yes, both Mystic the upper and the lower are swimmable. Okay, so the finance committee swim party can still go on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, sure. There you go. Any other questions? Okay. Into the budget, I think. Ooh, Wellington Park. One Wellington last, Park. one, one last, last, last uh, <laughs> update. Um, so uh, Wellington Park, which is the the tennis court park uh, across the road from DPW. Um, we again, it is another project that's not funded by these funds, but by outside funding. So the um, the town got state funding from the um, Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. Um, and we got about $400,000 and we also got some CPA funded funding from the town to construct uh, a demonstration project for uh, flood water drainage mitigation. And so uh, on a similar timeline as Spy Pond, we um, set the, that project out to bid and we um, will award a contract within the next few weeks for um, construction to begin in March. This is a, a tight timeline project because uh, per the, the state funding, <laughs> it has to be, it had to be designed and constructed in one fiscal year, so by the end of June. So um, essentially wow. what we're proposing in this project is it's similar to Spy Pond. We're going to um, repave the path a little bit with uh, porous paved material and also at some point transition to a a uh, slightly elevated boardwalk mm -hmm. that has a, a an overlook as its terminus. Um, if if you've ever been to Wellington Park, you might notice that it is quite a a, a wet grassy area. Um, and then in addition to kind of that park amenity section, we are proposing to create a a bit of a a water detention area. It, by way of like a, a parallel channel um, next to the brook so that in events of high flow, water will um, kind of like flow above an inlet, settle, and then after some time be released back into the brook through an outlet. Um, so we, um, we're excited about it. Uh, the funding we got, um, we're one of like two communities to, to get this funding in the state so far, so it's pretty exciting. Um, and, and the project will be completed uh, by June 30th. This year. Okay, this is the uh, Wellington. Exactly, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Is work gonna be done on the bridge? So, and, and, wow, you guys have good questions. So this is, we're anticipating this to be phase one of the Wellington Park project. Um, we've applied for additional funding to create um, like a loop around the park. The, so the town owns what, I, what we'll call the south bank where the tennis courts are, and then the north bank, which is closer to those apartment buildings um, on Dudley. Um, and so we're, um, we established the pathway in phase one so that it can be connected to more pathways in the future. And there is an existing footbridge that um, bridges uh, the south and north bank. And w our hope is that we can retrofit that to be ADA compliant, create a pathway on the other bank, and then build another bridge so that it's a, a full loop around the park. 
and we're working closely with the Mystic River Watershed Association um, in their vision of kind of a, a parallel or a, a greenway along the, the Millbrook. A corridor, green mm -hmm. corridor. Mm -hmm. Because the last time I walked over that, I was rather nervous. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> not the best bridge, but um, our hope is in the next phase to tackle that. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, budget. 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 John? Have you finished everything? Because we didn't get the Alwife Brook. Oh, we forgot about Alwife Brook. So yeah, I sorry. Mean, yeah. Then, yeah. I, I was going to question you. Well, you can you could just ask a question because that's that's pretty simple. We we just wanted to talk about the fact that we we created stormwater retention basins, and I don't know if all of you got to see that there was a great article in the Advocate about yeah, it. Picture, yeah, 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 um, which is which is great, and um, this is this helps. I mean, it's one small section, but it's a start to help cleaning the water that goes into Alewife Brook, and actually the Cambridge side they're doing a lot of work as well under the um, Massachusetts MS4 requirements for stormwater. Um, so that should help because Alewife Brook, if you m you may know, we talked about the grading before, gets a D in the state. It's not a very healthy waterway. But did you have a question on yeah, that? Yeah, I was going to ask about um, where the Minuteman bikeway goes under Route 2, and there's a, a wooden boardwalk that's the start of the Alewife mm -hmm. Trail, mm -hmm. and to the West of that is a wetland, maybe. It's just a big area of Phragmites. Mm -hmm. Who owns that? DCR owns yeah. it. So um, they're responsible for maintaining it. I'm sorry, who owns it? DCR. DCR. The state, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's good. Yeah. Okay. Other, Alan? Is, is the old CSO problem pretty much gone? Being reduced. We, every so it's often, we will get an alert. Um, about some um, contamination, but I, I, I know that um, Cambridge has uh, initiated like a, a phased project to uh, correct uh, the combined sewer overflows. So I, I think they only have a few more left from my understanding. John? Why does the brook get a D then? If, if we're, is it because of the CSOs? Or is it yes, it is because of the CSOs. So the, even the remaining outlets are um, they've just started. They've just started addressing them. So they've only. I mean, if there's three left, they've been addressing them since 2018. So it didn't change yet. Mm -hmm. It didn't change what's in the river yet. Well, Mill Brook is also low rating, and that's because of storm drainage barely. Mm -hmm. It's a C minus, though. Pardon? I think it's a C minus. Oh, so better than. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> just below average. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions on our life? Okay. Budget. Budget. Okay, that's me. Um, we are asking for in this coming FY20, uh, 60000 We are, um, so uh, probably a few new folks have a, a little tiny one for page one. And then, so that is a summary of the five years of history, one year of budget, and then three projected years. And then the second page breaks down the prior year actual, the current year budget, and then looks ahead for three years um, looking forward. So as I said, we're asking for 60000 This current fiscal year that we're in, we brought ahead a balance of 84000 plus um, I'm presenting the fund balance a little bit different because sometimes there would be some confusion about how much money have we saved for Spy Pond and is that money already spoken for? So I broke out separately the reserve that we built up for for the large expenditure for um, SPY. So this year we have 28000 set aside in addition to the appropriation in 19 for SPY. So this is going to be an expensive year for SPY. We got a $60,000 appropriation this year. And then if you look on page 2, you can see in the current year, we're intending to spend about um, 40000 for SPY, uh, 15 a little more for the res, which we've already spent, a little bit at Hills for some maintenance <coughs> work there. McLennan, we've spoken of the 10000 And then of the additional five that the CONSCOM got this year, they've spent about $3,500 <coughs> thus far. So that we're, we've 
spent quite a bit of this year's budget, but we will have a lot of SPY expenses this coming spring. So we're contemplating at the end of 19, we will have built our um, balance to $97,000. Um, we carry that forward into 20. We're requesting 60, and we're contemplating within FY20 uh, an expenditure of 69500 That'll bring our balance down um, a little bit, and we're we if we stay at 60000 we expect the balance to be trending downward a little bit. Um, this coming year, FY20, as I said, we're going to spend 69.5. The bulk in 20, as usual, is um, Spy Pond and then Res Second with the continuing effort with uh, the water chestnuts. So if anybody has any particular questions about the budget? Okay. okay. So you sort of answered the question I have, which is why have we built up this large balance and what is your plan for spending it down? And it seems to me like you're spending it down fairly slowly. Now, you also mentioned that you have a spy pond reserve. I would tend to take that spy pond reserve if it's really a reserve out of your fund balance. So now I'm, I'm seeing it in one year, but not in the next year. Does that mean you've spent that reserve as part of this year's budget? Or like, what's your plan? Or we ask you want to have in reserve. We ask first, we do spy fund in a three year cycle. Okay. So we put how much we expect to spend, we ask for it in three chunks. Okay. So for, un, until this iteration of this budget printout, the monies were sp per spy were buried in the fund balance, which okay. would lead to some confusion. So in actuality, the fund balance at the start of 19 is 28,000 set previously set aside plus the 84,000. So in actuality, the fund balance is 112 that came. But in order to display it more meaningfully, I broke SPY separate from the whole. And so we expect we'll spend that 28 plus the amount we asked for in this year spend all of that for okay. SPY, then it'll be gone. So in 19, there won't be a SPY reserve because okay. we will have spent it all down. Mm -hmm. All right. So, back to the same question. Why mm -hmm. are we only spending down this, what seems like compared to how much we're spending, a lot of reserve, at a rate of $10,000 a year instead of 15 or 20? Like, what is the minimum you don't want to go below? And when do you plan to get to it? Well, we like to have more money in our reserve than maybe some members of the finance committee. I'm just okay. yeah. I don't have an opinion. Yeah. I want you to tell me what you see as your minimum reserve. Well, can I? James, can can I, can I, I'll just help mm -hmm. answer. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the balance funding every year was a finance committee request a couple mm -hmm. years back. And that's like, by a couple years, it probably was like 10, but it, you know, I mean, long memories. So mm -hmm. if you recall, we had a point where there, um, where Jane Howard used to come in. One year she'd ask for 10000 the next year she'd ask for fifty. the next year she'd ask for twenty five. Mm -hmm. we said, why don't we just give you a balanced amount of money mm -hmm. every year so we can deal with it? Mm -hmm. And it did that did two things for us. One, it just made the appropriation mm -hmm. standard. And that led to the second thing was in dealing with water bodies in, in the cycle, and you'll have to correct me where I screw up here, which is they're coming here in February of 19 for money that they're going to spend in April of 2020. Mm -hmm. And so there were these situations where they needed the money. Like all of a sudden, like they realized a year ahead of time they needed the money. They didn't have any money in the balance and they were coming to the finance committee like, okay, we need the money for this year and we need it now. True. And so what this allowed us to do by maintaining a balance is if something were to pop up unforeseen Next, either this spring or next spring or somewhere along the way, the balance is there to protect against it. So you have some invasive species, you got to beat back, and then boom, right? You can deal with it. But if we don't do it this way, we have a. I understand all that. Mm -hmm. What I'm questioning is how high does the balance need to be, and when you pop up much higher than that, what yeah, rate do you want to spend it down at? So in other words, I'm looking at us saying that standard. Um, uh, amount that should go into the fund every year, $60,000, is that a little bit too high? 
that's all I'm asking. Yes, now, if what I'm told is to cover potential emergencies, we should have a $50,000 fund balance, then I'm not going to complain. But if a $30,000 balance is adequate, then I'm like, can we cut back a little bit or spend a little faster or whatever? Do you get what I'm saying, Teresa? Yes. So I'm just like, you, I'm not, I don't have an opinion. I want you to tell me what you think your minimum fund balance to cover emergencies ought to be. I would, Ed, I would f figure 65, 75 is, would be what I'd be comfortable with as like not to drop below just because you could have a wild mm -hmm. swing at SPY which could mm -hmm. like blow everything. Um, and I, we considered whether we would drop this year to 50,000 to bring it down a little more, but we're still a little queasy on on um, McLennan and not quite sure, you know, maybe we need some more testing. So I think that led us to put it at 60 and not drop it to 50. There's also, um, and I, I didn't get to mention this when we were talking about the Mystic Riverfront and the outfalls there. I don't know if you're all aware. There are a lot of outfalls along the Mystic River on the Arlington side. DCR has been addressing a lot of them <coughs> and fixing them, the ones that are theirs. It's kind of a very odd situation, but Arlington owns four of those outfalls. The rest of them are DCRs. One of them we're fixing with the grant that we, we wrote and we got. The other three are still in disrepair. We haven't addressed them at all. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to do that at mm -hmm. some point. That's going to be some kind of money. Um, so we're a little, a little nervous about taking it down too low, you know, depending upon what we need to do there. So cool. that was part of the, mm -hmm. the reasoning. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's interesting uh, about the outfalls. We own four. We own four. Of one of them we're taking care of. The and three we others one of four, are. We know where one of them is. But do we know where the other three yes, are? Yes, we, okay. we do know. We have pictures of them. I could show you pictures of them, but I didn't bring <laughs> them. The but they're really, they're really um, in disrepair. They, they have this, these, the, either they have the concrete that's breaking in, in the river, or the outfall itself, the pipe is just separated from where it's coming from. I, they're so they're they dysfunctional. Are, and so are the DCR ones. And I know the so DCR are the DCR ones. ones. I was just wondering if you knew which of those three that were in disrepair. We do. Ours, but okay, so you we do. Know. And we know which ones are ours and which ones are DCRs. And if you've been down there, you'll see DCR has theirs um, marked off with some um, black fencing um, because they've been working on them. So ours would be the ones that don't have the black fence. Exactly. Okay, so we don't, uh, you just, they're not the end of Palmer, this, you just don't know where, okay. But they're listed somewhere. So um, I, uh, we can get you that list. And is yeah. that, uh, that's okay. Yeah. If, if yeah. You know. yeah. And is that under the, that's an interesting uh, and an admirable task to take on, repairing outfalls. So is that, I don't know. To tell you the truth, we thought maybe we could assess Assistance. them first and and use some of the water bodies funny fund to assess them. What is the situation? What do we need to do? But not repair them because I don't think the water bodies has enough money to repair them. That may be CPA funds or something else. Well, but I, yeah. yeah, but our, our thought was we would maybe Assistance. use some of that ten thousand in the mis miscellaneous or other expenses to assess what needs to be done. On each one of those three, because there are there are town responsibility. Who would be in charge of repairing? DPW. The ta DPW. We'd have to work closely with them right, to do that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The question on these outflows, isn't that the responsibility of the water and sewer department? I mean, wouldn't that come out of the water and sewer fees? You know, I I really don't know. We That's don't a have good a question. fee for storm sewer stuff. I don't stuff. think so. We do, we do not. Water yeah. and sewer enterprise fund, but not a storm sewer. This is a storm sewer. It's not, yeah. It's storm water. Well, I, I thought uh, when the sewers were separated from the drains, that was a water and sewer problem. When it was separated from the storm drains, right? When the regular sewer was tied into it. Yeah. Certainly. So I think the I think the vision here for the water um, bodies people are to let the DPW do what their job is, and we'd like them to take out the head wall and cut the culvert back, and then create that same riparian area that we've done on the one that 
I guess the gentleman over there has looked at. I mean, that that would be what we would want to do. Um, but the repair and anything that's DPW, we'd have to work with Mr. Coppathorn on that and figure out who's, what slice of the pie belongs to us and what slice of the pie belongs to the DPW department. Okay, we finished up? Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, Grant? Um, the rehab storm sewers, that's different than rehab outfalls? Well, the, the storm sewer, well, the outfall takes the, the storm, drain. storm drain. Yeah, so it, it's part of the system. I guess so I don't understand so your we question. We have an account where you have storm sewer. In the water and sewer budget? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Their job to do this? Or not so maybe, maybe that uh, falls under DPWs? Well, it falls under yeah. the general. General. I think what's being discussed is whether yeah. it falls under the main part of DPW or it falls under water and sewer enterprise fund. I see. Yeah. Well, so also, ultimately, who makes the call to see who, I mean, it's great that we have a lot of people wanting to do it, but then I think about the design on the Mystic Lake, Mystic River, and there's a lot of people that got involved in that, but it's like a lot of cooks. So I'm kind of it's the same sort of thing uh, here for the storm sewers is that maybe you might want to look for a direction. Teresa, let me just ask Mike, right? What up? With it? Whose job is this? Should we do it? Or you know, that, that way you get a direction rather than yeah. you know, spending mm -hmm. some money on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you've, you've got a Good high point. official in DPW mm -hmm. sitting <laughs> next to you. So yeah. you can work that out. Yes. Any other? Uh, are you continuing with the budget? Right. You have more? To say on the budget, Teresa. Any more? I'm all set. You're all set. Any other? Any questions? Further questions? Okay. Um, Want to thank you for coming here tonight. Want to thank you for all your good work. Uh, it's appreciated, and uh, we'll get back to you. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Let's do the minutes. Okay. So does anybody have any corrections on the minutes from February 20th, last Wednesday? I've gotten some from Grant. Okay, I get a couple. Um, under three, one, at the end, the dilapidated garden on the east side of the house. I've changed that to neglected, is that better? That was one of the suggestions. Okay, that sounds good. The <laughs> neglected garden on the east side of the house will not be renovated. I, I would suggest you add in phase one. It's not in any phase. It's not, in, well, we don't know what phase two and phase three are. No, they were, they were discussed. I'm sorry? They were discussed, they haven't been designed yet. Okay, but the, the one thing we know is phase one will not address those. All right. We don't know if further phases will address them. Okay, under three, six, the last line, garbly secured state money. Could, I think we should add in Representative Garbley. Got it. Okay. Under item 838 on the next page. I, I think it clarifies it a little bit on the second paragraph. Uh, the budget is, I think the total CPA proposed budget is. So you, you identify what that money is. Okay, under number six, police. Public safety reported that an officer assigned to work with the FBI, one assigned to work with DEA. They are paid <coughs> overtime, 18-3 in one case, 16,000 in another. 
I is that what they're paid in overtime? Uh, Gerald's not here. Or is that what the reimbursement to the town is? That's the reimbursement to the town, which is for their overtime, not their main salary, which I believe the town is still paying. Okay. Then I would suggest we add which is reimbursed by the federal agencies. No, but they, this, they are paid overtime, so it's addressing those two pieces of overtime is being paid, is being reimbursed from the federal agencies. Yeah, the only, the only, the town, they are, the town pays the full salary of these right. people. And I think the minutes might represent the fact that the town covers the full weight of the DEA officer salary and the full weight of the FBI officer salary with the exception for however overtime is compensated to the town. Because the team, I mean, we didn't have time to discuss this in more detail, but it is, I still wonder why does the town pay that? And I don't wonder in the sense like, I don't think the town should do it. I wonder, does Winchester also have two full-time officers that work for other agencies? Does Cambridge have two? Are we cheap that we only have two and everybody else has 10 or are we, are we, you know, overly generous in that nobody else does it? And I don't have the answers to those questions. Well, I think all I'm trying to do is clarify that those two pieces of overtime are reimbursed by the federal agency because that's all that sentence speaks to. As far as yeah. the rest, I, I okay. think you'd have to address that to Daryl okay. um, on that. Um, you know, we could do it because they're federal agent. They're uh, fe um, uh, they work on the same activities that we do, mm -hmm. but it'd be an interesting question yeah, to know what kind of agreement mm -hmm. they have with Cambridge and Winchester and Lexington and Somerville. Um, but could could you raise that same make yes. a note and raise that same issue when Daryl's here? Yes. Okay. Uh, and or actually when John's here too. Uh, and then the final thing under eight. Um, at the end it says from the November election last year the state refunded Arlington $30,000 I guess I just add due to mandated early voting costs because they're not reimbursing us for our holding our elections that's our bit they're reimbursing us because of the early voting requirement they, they, they always have reimbursed but not this much yes it's bigger because of that yeah well, I, th I think they're reimbursing at this level now because they're mandating that we do early voting. So I just thought it'd be good to clarify that. Okay, are there any other corrections or comments from the committee? Do I have a motion on the uh, minutes? So second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded for acceptance of the minutes uh, as modified. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Okay. Now, uh, on the calendar going forward, uh, Liz has put together sort of a new one-page calendar, which I think will be good. Um, so on, on uh, Wednesday, we're going to have the LGBTQIA plus Rainbow Commission in, uh, I guess, requesting a, uh, an appropriation. Liz, do we know how much they're requesting? And just because they're new, getting um, funds, it's four thousand dollars. Okay, so they're requesting four thousand. Okay, the open space we got by easy. <laughs> okay, now in March, um, in March fourth, we got the high school building committee. That's going to be a very big issue. So please. Um, Make sure you're here on the 6th. Uh, we have the Capital Budget Committee coming in. That'll probably take a good part of the day. Um, Annie, anything on Minuteman? No, but I will try to have it lined up by Wednesday. I just have to get back to Steve. Okay. And to remind him we'd like to see the material at least uh, two days ahead, and they could email it to Liz. Uh, capital Budget, uh, also the same. and. Uh, Liz, could you remind the uh, building committee also to forward any 
materials that they would like us to look at ahead of time. Um, Dean, have you clarified it all on that funny machine in front of you? Uh, I did, I sent you an email. It's out March 20th. Okay, so March 20th we'll be hearing the school committee, or actually the school department. Um, that usually takes a good part of the day too. Um, okay, and then again, April 10th, we might, no, wait a minute, okay. April 10th, we might have a finance committee meeting, hopefully we will not. Um, and then the 22nd, we start with the uh, town meeting and we'll meet as per usual, 7.30 in the uh, Lions room uh, in case anything comes up at the last minute. Uh, any questions on the forward calendar we're looking at? Okay, uh, budgets. Do we have any budgets for tonight? <coughs> David? <coughs> on page um, 60, the clerk's budget, board of registrars. And then there'll be a, a change when we get uh, to page 60. It'll be passed out now. change on, on page 60 has to do with salaries and wages and um, adjustment on longevity. <coughs> it's not by much. It's 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 basically the, it's the salary and wages with longevity applying to the town clerk. And it's based upon the town meeting vote as well as the contracts that were voted in last year's town meeting. Some of those contracts, as it pertains to 680, it's a multi-year contract, but they changed mid-year in, in some situations, but not all. So that, that's why there was a discrepancy. We had a change. Okay. Having said that, uh, the town clerk's total was 276,872. So is your motion uh, for 276, 872? Yes. Second? Second. Okay, questions? Discussion? Um, what do they do? How do they spend their advertising money? Um, <coughs> there's, actually, there's a number of different ways, but advertisers for registration, state primaries, that, that has to be advertised. A special town meeting, um, anything, it has to be in here be put in the local newspaper, uh, mandated by law, and they call that advertising. Okay, yes. and Annie? Have you ever asked them why? I can't hear Annie. Have you ever asked them why their data processing expenses are $1,000 a year? I would think in an office like the town clerks, they would have a much higher need for data processing. Um, well, I've asked the question, and response was this is what we need I'm sorry Annie could you repeat that question again was it the data processing budget for an office that handles the amount of data that the town clerk's office seems very low to me and I'm not talking about machines I'm talking about software systems yeah, or typewriter records are really expensive yeah <laughs> yeah which leads me to another question which is do we really still have employees with typist in their title yes okay is, sorry i guess i'm just uh, if you notice some of these, you not notice some of these budgets on the clothing allowance you also see white clubs <laughs> it's listed in some of them. yeah but some you know reasons to use white gloves sometimes 
But not all citizens. <laughs> right, I get you. It's hard to it's hard to yeah. mm -hmm. it's hard to, to uh, question an e uh, level service budget. It depends on what your goal is. Okay, I question the level service budget for a budget where perhaps we could increase the quality of service if they would ask for the things they need to make improvements. Ah, now you're getting somewhere. Yes, yeah, now I'm getting somewhere. I'm not complaining about, the, I don't want the budget to be smaller. I'm worried that it's too small. Well, every year we ask. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, motion's been made and seconded for 276872. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Favorable action? 225.19. Okay, did, any others, David? Yes, um, order of budget. What's that? Um, uh, page 64. And it's the same situation here. If you notice the salary and wages line is the increase, and you see the, um, the stipends. $125. That stipend is not necessarily, and what we think is stipends, it's actually it has to do with closing lines. But it's now being carried in this uh, salary columns for tax purposes. So is your request 71970? Yes, it is. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Questions? Yeah, uh, Christine? Why would the registrar's office need a clothing allowance? Well, um, she is union. So there's one employee in the registrar's office. The other folks are um, appointed, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. But there's one, uh, mm -hmm. and she is union. She's not administration. But isn't it more for cleaning? If they don't wear a uniform, it's for cleaning the clothes that they wear. It's not really a uniform. It's now all being put into the office. You know, it's being charged up. In addition, it's income. The one time it wasn't. I still don't understand why we would need a cleaning allowance. I can understand the DW or, or the police. Or, it's, but, I understand what you're saying, but yeah. it's, it's, it's negotiating contracts over the years. Now, in the clerk's office, just to go back to clerks, of the people that works in the clerk's office, there's only two people in the union. In the registrar's office, there's one, a total of three, and they're entitled to this, um, this stipend. The clerk, assistant clerk, or not. Not union. Just the way the contracts were negotiated. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. And management thought it was probably worked out better than if we gave them a salary right. increase or something. And remember last year, side note, when they presented the, the contracts to us, the deputy and the deputy town manager, in my view, it's all agreed upon, but there are some really creative financing that I've never seen in contracts before in the 680 contract where they actually take and I, I don't understand it myself it's called market anal analyze the market and depending upon which step you are you might get it in addition to that one percent pay raise an additional 35 cent increase of my pay rate but they it's all in Philly negotiating that's why these differences are coming up mid-year, if you will, and some of the year contract. So there's some great <coughs> finance going on for contracts. Additional questions? Okay, motion's been made and seconded for favorable action on 71970 for the Registrar of Voters. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 2519. And I'll turn to Peter for the uh, town manager. Okay, town manager. Page 28. 
and this will pass out a couple of the uh, page in the page 28 in the budget book, the original page, uh, had an estimate for the town manager's uh, new salary. Uh, so what the new page has is the what the uh, select board has approved. That's the only change. So we recommend the budget is uh, centered on the handout six seventy nine four eighty nine. No, it's lower. It's hard to argue. <laughs> okay, so you're recommending I make a motion for 679-489. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Questions? Charlie. So uh, on the salary detail sheet that's in the book, what is the salary? For the manager? Yeah. Oh, it looks like he went from two, well, we can total, 215-957. And they approved 213.079. Between the old sheet and the new sheet. Oh, it's on the back. Yeah. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the, the benefits are on the front, but. Uh, yeah, I, I got it. Thank you. you passed the test channel. <laughs> you passed it. <laughs> okay, further questions? Could you explain website support services? The town website is managed by a person working in the town manager's office. Mm -hmm. And um, the software is rented now, it's, it's not purchased. And I guess that's been the case for maybe a year or so. And the price has gone up. That's what the extra, that's all that $6,000 is. For. It's a subscription from uh, uh, Virtual Town and Schools, which is part of Civic Plus. It, you know, it, it's, it's a purchase website. Instead of using free open source software, they should be. <laughs> I've heard um, often over the past several town meetings about an intending website redesign. I can't, I can't hear you. Sorry. I've often heard about a soon to be released new town website. Oh, what? that's happened. It's happened, isn't it? You know, it's, it's all it's all together now. It's at least as good as it was. <laughs> From my experience. <laughs> the company that designed the website was purchased by another company that uses a different technology, so I would expect a shift pretty soon to a different platform. We can only hope. And why is website support services in this budget rather than the IT budget? Uh, because the town manager wants to have his thumb on it. We moved it there. Based on what I've heard in the past. We moved it there, actually, in the past, several years ago. So one of the things we had to push up was, for budgetary purposes, to put the funding for a department, for the funding for any program, under the person who's actually managing the work. And so originally, the website support was IT. under IT, yeah. and the web person the was under the town manager. Yeah. And so we said this is silly, and we actually moved it under a kick to keep money and authority together. Because otherwise, better. if you don't do that's it. A, that's a better answer. Well, <laughs> otherwise, just to, to find out what happens if you don't do it, then you ask a question to a department where the money is, and they say, well, I don't know. I don't control that. And so you got to line them up together. So when we asked what the $6,000 was for, there was no, they knew the answer, they didn't have to go look it up. Yeah. What funding would be required for the town to have a website without a lot of 
broken links and circular things that go nowhere and things that wind up in the search engine optimization that are dead pages and a search function on the site that actually responds. What, what would the budget for that be? I mean, what would the budget for, more. for example, if you look at the annual reports? Or How much? Less. <laughs> or, for that, that, that's, a, that's a big question. We can delve into the technology, but I think right. there are probably think better solutions than what we have today. That's, for those of us who live in that world, the problem is it's a large capital project followed by a, a different tool that allows for a more modern look and feel, more modern maintenance. Okay, Annie, a little that's bit. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to say that, that what you're getting into here is that over time, the way the websites are designed and the technology used changes, and it changes a lot, and it has sort of slid out from under us, and it's a large capital project to move it, even though the annual costs might be lower. So there's an ROI problem. Does that make sense? It does, and I, I work in similar right. kinds of things. Right, and then the problem, that that's compounded by the who's responsible for all of that content management and we've always been understaffed on content management, just like we're understaffed on everything else. So okay, maybe I'll ask a different, is there a capital plan for the capital? That would be a Charlie do? question. We haven't had a request for a new website. So. Now, Annie is our new representative on the IT advisory group. I don't know if you've met yet. I, I, I don't think we've had a meeting since I became a member, but I will. I can have a conversation with David and see if he knows of any plans. Okay. Okay. But it is true that we recently went through a redesign. So it's like, how often do you want to pay for redesign? Is the other question. And is it capital? I'm sorry. And is it capital? You and I can arm wrestle about that. <laughs> Well, I mean, it has to have certain characteristics. It, it's going to cost enough to be capital. Well, uh, other questions? Okay. Okay, so um, the recommendation is for 679489? Yes. I can't remember. Do we have a second? Yes. Then. Okay, any <coughs> further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Closed? Oh, stay. Can I do that? Yep. Yep. Do that. I just have to take a vote. <laughs> okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Eleven. Opposed? Abstain. It doesn't go in the FinCom report, but it doesn't. We do warn articles. Okay, uh, motion is passed. 225.19. Additional. Legal. Another, another sheet. I okay. think. 56. Liz? Got it. Oh, you already have it. Yeah. That's page 56. <laughs> so the, the problem here was that uh, um, one of the uh, two of the two of the salaries weren't correct, so they've been corrected. Um, if you're looking at the salary page, uh, it's the the first line: the benefits attorney, worker compensation agent, and the uh, fourth line: the assistant admin claims coordinator. So we, rec we recommend the, uh, the budget as on this new sheet, which the bottom line is 
Do I have a second? Second. Second. Questions? Charlie. So, uh, Peter, my recollection is that this number 5244 expense is um, that's used to uh, cover court judgments and that sort of thing or le legal cases? Yes. Um, we inquire about that every year. And there's normally some sort of reserve in addition, right, or a balance. Yeah, now there are three things. Well, let's talk about that legal defense one first, which is just called expense here. Um, <coughs> legal expense, right. Mm -hmm. So most of that goes to um, their labor, uh, outside labor council. Um, and recently he says that it's been high because of the some high cost termination proceedings. Also, um, pay for environmental council, uh, but there wasn't, there hasn't been much this year, and and they also pay for outside public con uh, construction council, which that, that had a good chunk of it this current year. They use some of it on the Mugar defense, but we talked about Mugar defense uh, two meetings ago, and Al asked me to inquire about that again. There, there are kind of three ways that could be handled. Initially, it was handled as a warrant article for uh, 25000 I believe. And that's been expended. That was uh, either three or four years ago. It could be a, it could be a, it's not in this regular town meeting as a warrant article, but it could be put in the special town meeting. Is it going to be put into the special, do you know? Well, I got a story here. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we can cut it short. The answer is yes. That's what they'd like to do. Th this is the 25000 Yes. Okay. Have you finished with that question? Charlie? Anymore? I guess um, I, I just can continue to be concerned that we're spending money on this uh, UGAR um, litigation. And, um, you know, my intuition says that we're not going to win it, right? That, I don't know, it's been going on for years. I think so. isn't that the strategy? To not win it? To, to wear uh, it down. drag it on, drag it out, and maybe they'll get tired. That's right. Well, if it's gonna be in a special town meeting warrant article, we could we could discuss that here. It's not in this article, is it? That's correct. Okay. Um, so that, that could be a good discussion when we get to the special town meeting. Okay. Alan? Can we add to the town manager, list of town manager questions, the sort of cumulative spent for uh, this litigation about Newmar over the years?
Um, what we could do on on the fourth is uh, since the manager will be here anyway is once we finish up the high school uh, providing of course it doesn't take the entire length of the uh, meeting is uh, ask him to stay and answer some additional questions so um, let me touch bases with him and see if we could ask him at that point uh, You, you said there were three possible places to put the money for the Newgard litigation, right. and you said there was a story, and then it sort of stopped. So I'm, I guess I'm wondering what, what is where where do you think is the best place to put? Oh, it? thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the second possibility would be to um, put it in the um, legal defense uh, under the. Uh, under miscellaneous appropriation art. Right. But Which is the way it is in the manager's budget book. What? That's where it is in the manager's budget book. Uh, it's, it's not on that, you know, it's in the back of the book somewhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't think it appears in, well, yes, okay. And, uh, That money is supposed to be used for cases where the where the uh, town cannot, for one reason or another, defend a, an employee. And uh, it's rather specific in the enabling legislation for that um, special budget. I'm told I haven't seen them. I didn't look it up. So yeah, that was my always my understanding also. In which case, that might not be an appropriate vehicle. That, that's the argument for not using it for this purpose. And, and the other possibility would be to inflate the legal expenses that we were just talking about um, uh, to include whatever UGAR might be. <coughs> but, uh, It, it seems to them, you know, incidentally to me, that uh, the New Guard defense is kind of a special thing. And uh, it's really, it's not, strictly <coughs> speaking, it's not exactly legal work. Okay, so why don't, um, so it's your understanding that they, Doug was thinking it might go in the special town meeting? That's what he plans to do. He's talked to the town manager about it. And that's okay, so we'll be there, so we'll have a separate article to vote on okay and I'll ask the manager if he could stay after um, and discuss that while he's here anyway and we could figure out a few more questions for him okay so it's not in the legal is there any additional questions on the legal budget yeah um, John so this is across multiple budgets but, but the legal has an administrative assistant we just voted on the town manager's but they have an administrative assistant for a couple people. The planning department has an administrative assistant. Um, what is like we have two or three people who are administrative assistants who sort of answer the phone? The master plan, the master plan calls for finding redundancies in staff. Um, I understand that the town has gets this free office space on Pleasant Street for the for the town council and so they're there separate from the location the physical location of other people um, but what are there opportunities for shared responsibilities for administrative support for those four departments i mentioned board of selectmen planning town manager and 
we will probably pay different salaries to Can I answer that question? Oh, can I help? Okay, <laughs> wait a minute. Why don't you chime, David? Do you want to go first? Go ahead. All right. So the titles may be administrative assistant, but all of those people do very different things. So the Board of Selectmen staff doesn't just answer the phone. Okay, the warrant in front of you, they prepare, and they do um, all the agendas for the Board of Selectmen. They handle all of our correspondence. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that they do that's also supportive of the town manager, by the way. So they're sort of an extension of the town manager's responsibilities. Um, the, the administrative assistants that for the planning board, they're sort of not really just administrative assistants, they have sort of programmatic responsibilities, okay? And then the administrative assistants in the legal department, you know, I believe they're doing some of the claims coordination. So again, they all have sort of specialized responsibilities. You can't necessarily cross train and you can't necessarily say, oh, one person can answer the town manager's phone and the town council's phone because they're not, uh, that's not the only thing they're doing. So I would suggest that the way that we get efficiency in the system is proposition two and a half. So we have this limitation on how fast our, our costs can go up and it forces us to run pretty lean and mean and administrative staff in terms of staffing in all those departments we're actually running under and we're running under what a lot of other communities have. So uh, now that said, I often encourage the town manager to always be thinking a few years ahead about what the turnover is going to be and how can you modernize job descriptions and change responsibilities up, so on and so forth. And I've seen him do that a lot. So that would be my response, is that it's not really, it's not a fruitful area for pushing. There are other offices, there's particular offices where you might get some efficiencies out of pushing those particular offices. Um, Dean could speak to the treasurer's office and staffing there. Uh, and I, I suspect <coughs> that we could get a lot more bang for buck out of the town clerk's office if they would use some software, but that would be my. Just wait till the meeting when the chair doesn't show up, then we cut a bunch of things, and then he makes us put it all back when he gets back. <laughs> yeah. Only I can add to it. Just call him. It's like mm -hmm. a lot of the columns within our budget it says stipends or it says clothing. This happens to say administrative assistant. And my, my belief it should say administrative slash and slash, assistant slash in all other related mm -hmm. duties pertaining to the individual department. Because mm -hmm. each one of these administrative assistants, as we mm -hmm. call them, do separate jobs and separate functions. As a matter of fact, last year in the Board of Selectmen's office, we increased the position from a part-time to a full-time position because of the need and the workload. So each one is different. It, 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 this is only entitled. For, for budgetary purposes in classifications. So I appreciate that. Um, and I was trying to right. discount right. the work of these people. Right. Um, a frequent criticism I hear of the town of Arlington's operations is mm -hmm. the silo effect, mm -hmm. that everybody sort of does their own things. And when you look at how the town is structured building-wise geographically, it's not mm -hmm. too surprising because the Parks and Rec Department is over at the hockey rink. Mm -hmm. The Parks mm -hmm. Department is over on Grove Street at DPW. If you want to do something at the park, you might have to talk to either one of them. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for money for the tree fund, you might start at the treasurer's office and mm -hmm. then walk over to the legal mm -hmm. office and then find out that actually the information that you need is over at the controller's office, which is a different right. place. Um, and you have you know, all of these different people. We have the IT mm -hmm. department here, but GIS is over here. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine that in a town where everybody sat in the same mm -hmm. building, mm -hmm. where the legal person was right next to mm -hmm. the, the uh, town manager, mm -hmm. you would not have to support you know, uh, IT systems at multiple facilities. You would not have to support copiers at multiple facilities. And you would not have to support staffing, uh, the kind of administrative staffing we're talking about right now at that level. And so the background for my question was, you know, if people were geographically in a single place, would there be more easier redundancies, or maybe even technology-wise, could there be, you know, redundancy management? I think it's a good question. I think you and I should go out for a drink at Trist and talk about it. Huh. 
Well, there are, there are um, with the high school project, I believe the controller's office yes, is being brought great. back into the town hall and divided up the uh, assessor's office so it'll be fit in there. Um, I suppose if we could ever clear out the basement, <laughs> which is another issue. I mean, I, I don't disagree with the idea, but it's going to be hard to consolidate all those spaces. I mean, you know, the building is together in a new project. Um, I think it's good to move some offices out of the high school that got moved there because it had space and back in the town hall, but you can't make town hall big enough, I think, <coughs> to move the various things that you're talking about all into it so that they're all consolidated in one place. Um, from a, an IT perspective, I'm not sure you, you gain anything because everything should be in the cloud, so who cares where you're sitting and where your computer is. Um, but I get where you're going with the administrative support. Um, I think it's a, you know, when, when we have the manager here next time, uh, you know, it's a good question to raise. Um, I, I think, you know, there could be, we did move the retirement office back to the central school, which is right behind the uh, uh, town hall. Uh, if there was additional space to move the legal department over, um, even though I think the last town council threatened to quit if he was moved out of there, but he's not there anymore. I, I think the biggest impact is not financial, but, mm -hmm. but yeah. town operational performance mm -hmm. because you never have the bump into somebody in the hallway. Mm -hmm. And the tree warden has never met the people from the facilities department who we had a conversation about why doesn't the facilities department water the trees. They never have because <laughs> mm -hmm. they don't work together. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 I see this a lot, yeah. that somebody didn't talk to somebody because nobody bumps into each other in the hallway. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in addition to the whether we're paying somebody $50,000 to be an admin, there's a lot of other non-financial but tangible losses. Yeah. I think probably very few people, I, I, this was any, was saying, uh, very few people an just answer phones and make copies anymore. Right. They do that plus they do a professional part. Uh, you know something solid that that needs to get done um, and uh, uh, you know now that we got that old treasurer out we can probably finally get something done you know in that office <laughs> Peter uh, one other thing John uh, just kidding it's, it's, it's often it's, it's, I don't have the figures at my fingertips but it's been said in the past that that our legal office is staffed much less than other towns by maybe as much as 50%. Yeah, and there's something about that building that, like, don't we, like, lose the building if you take the legal, like, don't yes. lose it? It's, it's owned. You can't it trust it. Doesn't, or yeah, it was donated by somebody mm -hmm. to the town, so they want to use it, but right. maybe there's somebody else who could use it. Right. But it has to be used by the town. Yeah, but I, I, I think these are broader questions than finance. Yeah. And so, they may need to and then uh, pursue a different name. Remember when they moved the retirement from the basement of the high school over to the, to the central building, mm -hmm. they now pay rent mm -hmm. where they didn't pay rent on the school center. Yeah. Well, okay. You're so always going to be paying rent in the future <laughs> if you yes. see the person. Okay. Uh, Dean. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we moved the budget, so I'm going yeah. to move the budget for $497,804 as recommended in the amended printout. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 225.19. David or Peter, any additional? We're all done. All You're set. all done. All done. Okay, you still got to show up though. Yes. <laughs> okay, any other budgets? I could try to re explain library. We did, but there were a lot of questions. Okay, well, let's so see if we can answer everybody's. All right, one of the questions was on minimum wage, and indeed, minimum wage is $11 until July 1st, and then it will be $12. So, why it was determined that way, I suppose we'd have to ask town manager so if you want to put that question on this list. But that's how it's working. Um, 
all the salary, there were no new positions added. So some people were moved around. They were given step increases. These, um, that $60,000 difference in salaries was, is due to contractual agreements, renegotiated uh, step increases, not new people. So I, I mean, that's, if you want me to, to have Andrea figure out each of these new, what each person got as a new step and also sharing with every other library in the state. <coughs> right. So they don't, those libraries do not have to share with libraries that have been decertified. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Oh, and also we can apply for funds. And um, also Andrea is applying for a grant to help in the reno of the Fox Library which we wouldn't be able to do if we weren't certified. Um, there's a number of other, other technical things. And let's see. I know I think that was the answer to most of the questions. Um, let me see if there are any others I wrote down that I didn't get the answer to. No, I think that was basically it. And then the things that will be um, like I said, Charlie and the Capital Planning Committee will talk about uh, the plan uh, renovations and changes to the two libraries. Alan? Well, a, a Massachusetts minimum wage went up January 1st. Is there a, a specific exception for municipal employees? I don't know the answer to that. I just okay. know that's that this is, right. That's why I want him to answer that because that's what, what she had said for, before. For most employer, employers, it's right. January 1st. Right, and it's not just the library. All, so that's how it is in this town for all minimum wage jobs, because they're going to be upgraded on July 1st. Okay, I guess I'd like to ask the town manager if, if for some reason the town's exempt from the law. I, I don't see that as, as an exemption. But maybe it is. Unless they consider it the first of the fiscal year. It's January 1st, that's calendar year. Oops. Sorry. Mary Margaret, what's happening? What's it down. go to? In I'm July? Sure. 12. 12. Group yeah. involves, but I think there is a, um, an exception. Think, yeah. Exemption mm -hmm. from certain certain employees of the town. Might not be full time, but it could be occasional employees or something like that. I, I just think. don't want to make sure we under budget. Right. You know. right. Well, I'll just fire one or two and pay the rest more. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, either Alan or Mar Mary Margaret, you could work this out between you. One of you could just call the town council. And pose yeah, a question. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, is everybody satisfied with the answers, Charlie? Yeah. I, I'm just going through the list of employees here, and um, in the the previous employees, two of them show up in the current uh, list. Very in Linton. Right. They previously had that job. Then they moved to the other job because Alexander is right. gone. But of the other, if the other uh, former employees, they're not in the list, so they must be new people in the list, right? That's I said. I'm, I'm counting. Who are you talking about, yeah, Charlie? Yeah, maybe new from last year, but we're not. Yeah. The question I raised, John, was: Are these new people starting in the the well, uh, bottom of the? pay range or not? That was, the, that was the question I asked. And the response I got was, well, everybody was already there. Right. But if I look on the list, they all the employees that are currently employed weren't there before because you've got, at least as I understand this, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight people who were former employees that are not on the list. So they must have been replaced with new people. Who, who is it you're talking about? Yeah. Names? Okay, the names are um, Cannon, Andrews, Coffee, Anderson, Arch, Fulcino. Anderson is gone. Anderson retired. Uh, let's see. Barry went full time. River is, is there. So 
Well, you want to know if Thompson is starting at the for bottom. For take, example, take Cannon, for example. I mean, I'm sorry to belabor this issue, but if Cannon was formerly in the position that's now occupied by Gilbert, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Cannon is up. Uh, oh, Cannon is up there. Yeah, you're right. Was yeah. Yeah, okay, Cannon is there. Okay. <coughs> now, are you are you comparing this list to last year's list? Um, just, no, it's just I'm just looking. At in other words, if all these people moved into different positions, their names should be elsewhere in the left-hand okay. column, and they're not all there. That's what I was trying to point out. But you're right about Canon. It's interesting. Can I make a recommendation? If you could shoot an email just with like the, th the names that you're concerned about, just shoot an email to Mary Margaret and, and uh, John and let them go through so, so we know specifically what people you're seeing. Sure. And then uh, take a look at her, maybe, um, one way to do it is look at the people from last year, last year's list. Okay. Okay, so yeah, if, if you guys could communicate and just nail down the specific people, uh, I think that would be great. Um, are there any other budgets for tonight? Okay, now, uh, we only have what will probably be a reasonably short hearing on Wednesday. What other budgets do we have for presentation on Wednesday? Um, I can rank. Okay, you can do the rec and rank. Are there any others? Uh, Anybody else close? Christina, what do you think is the time schedule on DPW? We might be able to do facilities next week. DPW probably a week after that. Okay, Grant? Um, probably not next week, but the week after that. Okay, Charlie, you're? We're meeting on the 7th and the 14th with the various departments. So one set will be finished after the, you know, half will be finished after the 7th and half will be finished after the 14th. Okay. Uh, Annie will find out about Minuteman. Okay. Look, um, on Wednesday, we have the uh, just that one hearing and two budgets which probably take maybe a half hour. I, I, I don't see holding a, hear, holding a meeting for probably is 45 minutes work the most. So uh, I hate to do this, but Liz, could you reschedule uh, the uh, hearing for either the 11th or 13th? Okay, so uh, I'm canceling Wednesday's meeting. Uh, I'm just not going to bring everybody in here for 45 minutes worth of work. Uh, so what that'll mean is probably the fourth and sixth. That'll take those two things will take up most of the evening. So um, that means we have the 11th and the 13th, depending upon when Minuteman is coming in. Uh, so could everybody else please try to target the 11th, the 13th, and the 18th because the school committee. That'll take the 20th. So the 11th, the 13th, the 18th, those are the days we've got to get pretty much all these budgets in and done. Uh, um, we, we, you know, we have the, the last week in March to hold for spare, but I'd like to try to peop people would at least aim for that. Um, so Liz, uh, cancel, reschedule for one of those days. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wednesday meeting is canceled. Um, is there any other business? Water bodies. Water bodies. Water bodies. Ah, good idea. Okay. Water bodies. Move approval. Okay. 
meeting is uh, moved. Made, moved. 60, Motion has been made for sixty thousand uh, dollars for water bodies. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. John. Um, I don't know if you're keeping a running list for the town manager questions. I just looked up what the fees are for Arlington athletes. There's definitely higher fees if you're doing something that has high costs, like hockey is seven hundred dollars a year, whereas track is two hundred dollars a year. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. This is that's Captain Bodie's question. <coughs> um, I'm trying to. I would like to find out from the town manager what the Arlington Belmont crew pays to the town. I, I didn't get an answer that I was that I think was correct at the meeting. And um, so if you're keeping a list of questions for the town manager, um, I see here from the fee schedule of the town that the town should Okay, can we, though, finish the water bodies first? Okay, I thought it was related to water bodies, but maybe. Well, yeah, but it's not, really doesn't tie into the budget per se. I'm not saying don't bring it up. I'm just saying uh, okay. I, I don't want to hold up this, you know, right, waiting for a question, for the question to be answered. So. Um, if, if you could um, just email me the question and I'll ship it over rather than do my holding of notes. So is there any other questions on the discussion on the water bodies? I, I just want to say I have the same uneasiness about the amount of money that they continue to carry over. Right. And I feel like I'll, I'll vote to approve this budget, but I think we need to watch that in, in next year and the year after. So that, that's why I wanted to get them to tell me what their floor was. So when they're above <coughs> that floor of, oh, we got planning by the end of the year to have X amount left, that's when you say, maybe this year don't need quite so much money. That's my theory. And whether or not we accept their floor of $65,000 or not is another question. But I think we need to watch the mm -hmm. the unexpected contingencies. Yes. And if they have them, what, what, what amount are we talking about right. from year to year? Mm -hmm. um, I think we should pay. Mm -hmm. It's worthwhile to have a contingency, but I am questioning whether that amount that they're carrying So, so the question, I, you know, in support of both Annie and Christine, uh, you know, another way of looking at that is, uh, if they do have this surprise expenditure coming in, they can come to the finance committee and get it in the reserve fund, exactly. and uh, not be squirreling, squirreling it away in, you know, some other fund. And if we, if every department had an extra fifty thousand dollars squirreled away, you know, we'd have. A lot of money. John? Well, I was going to say exactly what Charlie just said. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just wondering whether or not we ought to have some kind of criterion about what, I mean, uh, maybe there's some sort of probability that people should attach to the possibility of this, you know, big nasty situation that requires $50,000 reserve. Um, you know, just as Charlie said, that's what the reserve, reserve fund is for, exactly. You know, the unanticipated something that happens. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that the, the big issue has always been Spy Pond, that, you know, all of a sudden the, the pond opens in April and the place is just a disaster, mm -hmm. and they need to spend $70,000 before, like within 30 days to keep down a bloom and uh, so I, I, I think that's the logic behind it, Grant. I agree with everybody here, trying to keep a perspective. Uh, these folks, I mean, you're asking for a, a lot of analytics and mm -hmm. scientific proofing. And these are volunteer folks, mm -hmm. and if they weren't doing this, what would happen? But they, I, I mean, they couldn't really answer questions about the design. They couldn't an answer how they measure stuff. So and you might be asking too much of them. And, and yeah, what if something comes up and they really need it? Uh, then they have it. I mean, it's, I, if the fund was a lot more, I would want to monitor it. And I agree. That, eh, but at the same time, they're not, it's, it's like the art folks. They're, they're not managers. They're not engineers. They're just citizens that are they're doing this that no one else would. 
So can I, can I make the counter Annie? argument? So first of all, Teresa Benedictus and Emily Sullivan are not volunteers. I'm with you all the way. Okay. <laughs> Secondly, if they are holding on to, um, you know, want to have a minimum of $65,000 in reserve because they're worried about an emergency, we could offer them an alternative, which is, hey, you know, and it depends on whether or not we can do it timing-wise. We, you can come to us for a reserve fund transfer if you emergency <coughs> looms. I don't know whether we would do that like in March if they suddenly decided, oh my God, the ice is breaking up and we have a problem, or whether it fits their timing. I don't know how we do reserve fund transfers. So you, you need to explain to them how that works technically. But the question is, do we want to do that as part of the process this year, or do we want to have it be, uh, let's approve their budget and then let's have a conversation with them about a future policy that we'd like them to adhere to? Dean? So I would say I think we should approve it, mm -hmm. but I want to clarify on that future comment. I think mm -hmm. the Finance Committee is questioning the Finance Committee's policy. Mm -hmm. so this isn't their policy. Like, we mm -hmm. told them to do this. We said you should ask for one amount every year. So when we're saying there's no wisdom, mm -hmm. there's no wisdom here. <laughs> like, these people here have no wisdom, not the ones who are doing the presentation. Because just to round out, if you recall, mm -hmm. while we're saying we're okay with the reserve fund transfer, we weren't okay with it before because, you know, if all of a sudden the school c committee has a special education issue and they need a reserve fund transfer, snow and ice goes out of control, and we have fire over time, we're okay, let's give them reserve fund transfers. Then they show up looking for 50 grand and we're like, whoa, we don't have any money for you. Let that crap grow, right? Because it's not as important. And so to get away from doing things like that, and to get away from saying 15 grand one year, 60 the next, 100 the next, 25, we said let's just do a level budget. So we can talk about what the floor would be at a future time, but I think this is our policy. We have to own what we told them to do. I'm Up to it, including, by the way, that spreadsheet yes. that they hand in, yeah. Peter and I created it. Okay, Alan? Well, I was gonna give Teresa credit for that, but I think out of all the I committees like that we budget, mm -hmm. Water Bodies probably for the last 10 years has had the best, most fully developed mm -hmm. budget with the records. I've got a feeling the records go past mm -hmm. You know, earlier than the five years, so at least I think we know all the actuals that have been spent, and we can pretty much look and see what what, what was the worst case year in the last ten years. But but they've done a superb job of keeping both the actuals and the forecasts. So I think the data is probably all there, and we need to we should look at it. Right. We could probably ask for how far does that spreadsheet go back and get a copy of that spreadsheet. Yeah. So so does somebody like should be making assignment of somebody offline to kind of go look at all of that and see whether we want to recommend not a change in the policy of level funding them in some way but maybe a change in the policy of how high that number gets mm -hmm. or what their required spend down is or something that keeps them a little tighter or not but I think it's worth a look and my only reason for saying that is just I know what our cash flow overarchingly it's going to look like for the next five years and it's pretty ugly so every little bit helps okay I uh, mm -hmm. we have I'll a motion on the on table for 60,000 um, in keeping with my policy mm -hmm. of uh, of giving assignments to those people who are most enthusiastic about them <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll take it. Since, I'll take it, Alan. since Christine is uh, head of that um, area and Ms. LaCourt is also on that subcommittee. Um, I could ask you, um, this is assuming we go ahead and appropriate the months, that you should, the two of you or one of you will leave that to Christine, uh, discusses that next year we'd like to see how these reserves track out and because there's been questions about how big they should get. Um, so I'll leave that as part of the motion if that's acceptable. Any further discussion? Grant. Outfalls. Um, it's just, I mean, sure, I'll, I'll approve the budget. Do you want them doing outfalls? Or does it mean more the barrier? Or, um, no. I don't think they're doing the outfalls. I think they're just doing some design work and. They're doing uh, an even assessment. still, I don't know about it. They just, do we want them designing it? Especially if you took a look at that Mystic River yeah. design. Well, what that could be another right issue that uh, Christine and Annie. Bring up with them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Any further discussion? Motion has been made and seconded for $60,000 for the water buddies under their article. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. So that passes. Favorable action. Unanimous. Any further business? Okay, well, we got a lot done today. I uh, will cancel Wednesday's meeting. Liz will reschedule that hearing. Um, and uh, for everybody else, try to aim for the 11th, 13th, 11th, 13th, and 18th, and see if we can get the budgets done for that point. Any other business? Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.